Hello students, welcome back to this session on electromagnetics and EMFT and today in this session we are going to discuss about the electric potential energy, electric potential and at the end of this lecture we will be discussing about the equipotential surfaces. So first of all what is electric potential energy? If we have the system of electric charges, each charge is exerting force upon one another so if I have to change the position of one of these charges then some external force is required which force is making some external work to be done on these charges. So let's suppose here I have two charges placed at position A and position B. At position A I have charge Q1 and at position B I have charge Q2. So both of them are exerting electric force upon each other and if I am changing the position of Q2 from B to C then we require some external work to be done upon Q2 in moving it from distance R1 from Q1 to distance R2 from Q1. So I hope you understood it. So there is some electric force and there is some external force to move the charge. So according to the electric force we will be having the electric work done and the external force is making some external work done on these charges. So now if I represent the total work done so it will be So the external work done plus the electric work done is equal to zero. I hope this thing is clear. Now if I need to find out the external work done then it will be equal to negative of electric work done. Okay. So now here I am considering that the kinetic energy is zero. Then only this equation will hold true. Okay. So now here if I am moving this charge and the external work done will be equal to the negative of the electric potential energy. Okay. So now here I hope you understood it. So we can calculate the electric force with the help of Coulomb's law and with the force we can calculate the work done. And with the help of this work done we can calculate the external work done. So if I have the electric force with the force I can calculate WEL. We can take the negative of WEL which will be equal to W external or electric potential. I am denoting it with U. So electric potential energy is equal to W external. Okay, so now we'll derive it how we can calculate the electric potential energy. We all have discussed about the Coulomb's law in the previous video. I hope you have seen that video. If you have still not seen that video, I recommend you to watch that first. There I discussed about the force. So force according to the Coulomb's law, what was it? It was equal to Q1, Q2 upon 4 pi epsilon r square. So I have some direction also. So this AR represents the direction of the force. So I hope you understood it. So you remember it now. So this is my force. So now I need to calculate the work done. If I am supposing that here I have small portion of the displacement dr. So for this small portion of displacement I can calculate the small work done. Then I will integrate it from r1 to r2. I will get the external work done which will be equal to the electric potential energy. Okay, so let's derive it. So this is force. If I need to find out the small work done, it will be given by dW. So dW will be equal to the force into small displacement. What is the small displacement? Small displacement is dr. So it will be equal to Okay, so now here this is the small work done. Now I need to find out the total work done from moving the charge from 
R1 to R2. Okay, or from B to C, and I'm increasing the distance from R1 distance to R2 distance. So total work done will be represented by W. Now this uh, this is a small work done, so I can integrate the small work done from R1 to R2. So I have just integrated the work done over dr. So, so w will be equal to integration of dw over r1 to r2. So here I have put the value of dw which was q1 q2 upon 4 pi epsilon r square and the integration limits are from R1 to R2. Okay, so now I hope this thing is clear. Now we just need to integrate this and we'll be getting the electric potential energy. So what will be the W external? W external will be equal to the electric potential energy. I'm denoting it with U. Okay, it's in the terms of R. So I am representing it with U of R. It will be equal to So the W external is equal to U of R which will be equal to negative of this electric work done which is Q1, Q2 upon 4 pi epsilon 1 upon R1 minus 1 upon R2. I just integrated it and put the limit. So integration of, of 1 upon R square dr will be minus 1 upon R and when I am putting the limits R1 to R2 it will be 1 upon R1 minus 1 upon R2. So from where this negative sign came? So because the W external was equal to negative of W electric. So here W external if I need to calculate so it is W electric and if I need to find out W external from it it will be negative of the W electric okay. So now here we have this negative sign as well. So now if I am considering the one point to be infinity and next point to be R1 or I am moving the charge from infinity to R1. So here what is my R1? R1 was my initial point and what was R2? R2 was my final point. Okay, so now let's put the value of the initial point to be infinity. So, okay, so now we know 1 upon infinity will be equal to 0. And 0 minus something will be negative 1 upon R2 and this negative and this negative will become positive. So which implies U of R will be equal to So this is my electric potential energy. If I am moving the charge from the reference point to the given point, so given point is at R distance and from R1 I am choosing it to be R distance and now from infinity if it is moving to the R distance then the external work done will be equal to the electric potential energy and we have derived the formula to find out the electric potential energy. I hope there should be no doubt in this formula. So now here I know what is electric potential. Electric potential is given by So I am representing the electric potential with Vr and Vr is equal to Ur upon Q. So what I am doing, I am having a test charge. 
I am moving the test charge from infinity to the given point and I am calculating the electric potential energy. What should be the properties of the test charge? We have already discussed in the previous video also. The test charge should not have high electric field so that it will disturb the surrounding electric field of the given charge. It should be very small in the charge sense. So now here the Vr is the electric potential energy divided by the test charge. What is the electric potential energy? It was equal to Ur. So we'll be putting the value of Ur. So let's suppose our test charge was Q2. So now we are dividing the Ur by Q2 and we'll be getting the electric potential. So Vr will be equal to So now here what will be the Vr? It is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon r into Q1. So this is the electric potential due to one charge. Now if I have system of charges, electric potential is a scalar quantity. So this is a scalar quantity. And if I need to add the electric potential due to system of charges, what I will be doing? I will be adding these electric potential simply. I will just add the magnitude of the electric potential. So, Vr for the system of the charges will be equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon. So, it is added with the summation of Q and here summation of R. So, we will be adding it with the different summation of Q and the different summation of the distance between the two charges. So, this is the voltage due to the different number of charges placed in a region. If I have more than one charge, I will be just simply adding the magnitude of the electric potential. So, I hope now you understood these things. So, I hope now there is no confusion about Vr and Ur and the relationship between them. So, now we will be seeing the relationship between the Vr and the electric field intensity. In the previous video, I have already discussed about the electric field intensity. So, we will be seeing the relationship between electric field intensity and Vr. So, we know that force is given by Force is equal to QE also DW will be equal to QE DR. Okay, we know this thing. So, DW is equal to force into DR instead of force. I directly put what is the value of force which is QE. Okay, so now DU will be equal to negative of DW. So, it will be equal to negative of QE DR. Okay, so this is the electric force. I require the external force. External force is the negative of the electric force. So, du will be negative of QE dr. Okay, so now in the case, in the place of du, I will be putting So, in the place of du, I put dv into Q. What is dV? I know I gave the relationship between V and U. V is U into QR. So, this is the relationship between U and V. So, according to the relationship between U and V, V is equal to U upon Q or alternatively I can say u is equal to q into v. So, instead of u, I can place dv into q. So, this q and this q will get cancelled out and here I will be having dv is equal to negative of edr. Okay. So, this is the small electric potential. If I need to find out the electric potential, I will just integrate it. So, vr will be equal to minus of integration of EDR from R1 up to R2. Okay, so now if I am moving 
from infinity to the given point instead of r1 so here this is not minus r1 instead of r1 i'll be having infinity so so this is the relationship between the electric potential and the electric field intensity so i hope this thing is clear now coming to the equipotential surfaces so here if i have the electric charge so let's suppose this is a positive electric charge so here i have electric lines of force i have already discussed about these things so here i will be having the equipotential surfaces at the equipotential surfaces so here at the tangent of the equipotential surfaces there will be no component of the electric field intensity so here if i draw the tangent at this tangent will be having the zero electric field and now at the perpendicular portion will be having the direction of the electric field so this was all about the equipotential surface if i have a charge the equipotential surface will be the region surrounding it at the equal radius so here i have radius r1 this is my first equipotential surface and at, this is at the radius r2 so this is my second equipotential surface if i have to move one charge from from here to here along this equipotential surface only so if i am moving along this surface only there will be zero external work is done on the charge so in this case the change in the potential energy will be zero and the electric potential will be zero so i am moving from one potential point to another potential point i don't require any work to be done on this surface so i hope you understood each and everything if you still have any doubt now you can put the doubt in the comment and i'll try to resolve it as soon as possible i hope you like this video if you like it share it with your friends subscribe the channel and also push the like button thank you